here and you're talking about the volatility of the, the working environment. Yeah. And these, you know, snap judgments and all the rest of it. Because I think that everybody would have said if you'd have lost that Coventry game, Spurs would have been in crisis. Mm. I don't know if you accept that, mm. but can you talk a little bit about that and just how you personally deal with this kind of crazy world that we're now in? Um, yeah, look, I think. Uh, firstly, you, you know, you can sort of, oh, well, if we lost the other night, then, you know, well, you know, it would have been in crowd crisis. But if we won our first game, we'd probably I'd be sitting here and, you know, people saying, well, can you win a title this year? So, and both of it are just not the reality of my world. So, um, I've always been pretty good at just sort of, yeah, as I keep saying, staying clear eyed and focused about what's important um, to me in terms of what I'm trying to build. And, and, um, you know, I think you, you, the external noise, whether it's valid or not, um, I just find this is a massive distraction to what you're trying to do. And, um, you know, I've learned along the way not to, you know, in both ways, you know, where things are going well, they're not going well, not to, not to let that external noise distract me from, like I said, what I think and what I believe needs to be done. I, 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 Many parts of my life, I'm not very disciplined, especially around eating. But when it comes to football, I'm really disciplined. Like nothing will, will take me away from what I think needs to be done. I, I don't really care. I don't care, but I, I just don't. Won't let it into my my space. Is there anything specific, maybe non-football, that you might do? Where I'm sure you hardly got enough five minutes in the day. But is there anything that you can take yourself away? And no, like I said, it's it's about sort of some of it's just about the world you live in and where you're taking information. I think you know the people around you are important. Um, so yeah, I make sure that I surround myself with people, particularly you know in in the working environment, that you know understand me and understand that, and and make sure that they're uh, also clear on what we're trying to achieve and, and not get distracted, and then. You know, outside of football, again, you know, it's the people you surround yourself with and where you take, you know, you get that sort of feedback and information you need for, for yourself. Um, so, you know, I've, I've got a pretty sort of closed world around me that, that's kind of developed over 26 years of doing what I do and I can sort of insulate myself maybe better than others from, from whatever the noise may be. Mark, do you do yoga? Oh, no chance, mate. <laughs> I've got no patience for it, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with yoga, by the way, for anyone who does it. Can I, um, do you mind if I go back to, to Romero? And yeah. The, the, the goal against Arsenal and the fact that he retweeted that thing about yeah. travel. After, yeah. Have you rethought about that? Might he rechange, might he change, or look again at... At, sorry, what? Oh, no, look, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I think the question was around you know, sort of that game in particular. I, I don't like kind of, again, you know, post-game trying to f find sort of reasons or maybe excuses for, for things. I'd, I'd rather deal with them on merit and we, we prepared well for that game. But that's a separate issue of, of you know, um, we've always got to look after our, our player welfare. I mean, we've spoken about earlier about, you know, the international aspect of, of you know, our footballers and I know better than most how much travel and um, time difference and rest uh, how important it is when preparing for games so it's something that we we should definitely uh, we, we do we, we look at but I think it's something you look at as an, an individual basis um, but my point around the Arsenal game was that I, I didn't think it affected our, our sort of build up for that He's always seemed like the leader of the pack. Mm. Um, he is. Uh, he is, and, you know, he wasn't happy about it. <laughs> but, you know, he also knows that, you know, these are, these are things happen in, in football and it's how you, you respond to it. And um, he's, mate, I, I, I love him as a, as, a, as a player, as a person, the way he trains, the way he, he conducts himself. He's a winner. Um, I said, I think, last week when people asked me, having people who have won things in the building how important it is and he's he's living he's a living embodiment of that but 
that doesn't make you sort of bulletproof. You, you know, there are going to be days where it doesn't work out for you. And uh, he was disappointed that he couldn't do more in that space. It wasn't just him, though. There was a combination of things that cost us that, that goal. And there was a combination of things that cost us that game. Um, but, you know, he's, uh, it's not like he's gone into his shell afterwards. He, he wants to get back out there and, um, and make amends. No, I, I kind of, I think the point I was trying to make is I ignore the tide, I just keep swimming. So, But others may feel that way and I think if they do, then that's there's nothing wrong with that. I keep saying this, you know, you need to embrace the struggle because no, you know, um, you don't get success just by everything rolling out perfectly, you know. There's, there's times you just got to roll your sleeves up and keep going and whether that's swimming against the tide, running uphill, Going against the wind, use whatever metaphor you want. It just that's that's great. That's what you need. Um, but I, like I said before, I, I I ignore it because I don't think that's going to help me in any way. I've um, what's what's the best thing, best process for me is to, like I said, just stay steely eyed, focus on what I think I need to do to get us to where we want to. No, it's it's all the same. It's just it's been a constant um, in my career, and um, but it's a. I think you know. I, I don't think I'm in a unique space. I, I keep saying to people, just show me a success story, and I'll show you a struggle. You know, it's not it's not something that's unique to me. It's universal, but people forget the struggle and look at kind of the end bit. Um, but you need to go through that. You need to. That's the time you test your resolve, test your belief, test test everything that you you want to do. Um, so, it's it's this is no different to anything else I've ever done. It's you know, it's uh, it's exactly the same process. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Like I think I said on the last week, it's a shame that you know something that young people, yeah, you know, for their own reasons, seem to enjoy. You know, they have to close off from because of abuse. And I just, I, I don't think that's right. I haven't, no, I haven't spoken to to Brennan um, about it. Um, the lads kind of know what I'm about and kind of my beliefs, and I keep telling them the same thing. You know, it's. Um, it's the most important people in your life. That they're, they're the ones you've got to worry about uh, their opinion, not, not anyone else's, in terms of validation. And uh, you know, just keep enjoying it. I mean, you know, he won a game of football for us the other night. You know, with pretty really good finish in a critical moment. I reckon you put any one of the, his critics in that situation, and they'd be looking for a change of pants pretty quickly. I reckon. But they don't think about that in that moment. But that's, you know, that's the same time Brennan's had a dream of being a professional footballer his whole life from a little kid. And now he's living that dream. And I hate to think he's not enjoying it. Um, you know, I keep saying to him, we're all pretty blessed to do what we do. Um, you know, even in the even in the worst of times, um, you know, we, we, we're still pretty lucky to, to be able to do um, what we wanted to when we were 10 years old. Not many people can say that. Um, yeah, to a certain extent, I think, um, I mean, yeah, the other night he, he literally started, he came on after 10 minutes, so it wasn't like he was a late sort of sub, but I think when he, when he comes on a sub, obviously he can make an impact, opposition's a, a fairly, a little bit tired, the game's a bit more open, uh, no, I just, I just think with Brendan, it's just the consistency in his game that, um, you know, we're constantly working on with him, um, 
you know, he's he's always getting into good areas. It's about sort of decision making sometimes in that front third. Um, but it's a, it's a difficult position to play as a, as a young player. Um, and you know, with his skill set, um, you know, I think once he kind of unlocks in his head sort of the stuff he's really good at and and kind of adjusts his game to make sure he gets the most out of that aspect of it, I think he'll become you know, a, a very you know, a very important player for us. But you know, like I said, he works hard every day on that. And um, yeah, you know, sometimes people just look at goals and assists, which is the obvious measure for for attacking players. But he also gives us a lot of other things, particularly you know, working hard defensively, which is which he's worked hard at. He had to when he first came to us. It wasn't something that was natural to him. Um, he's got really he's got a lot better at that. Um, but it's just now, just keep players, keep putting the layers on his game. No, you, you, you kind of, you like think you get a bit wiser as with every experience and maybe, um, you know, kind of know what's coming so you're better prepared for it. Um, but the one truism about the whole thing is I don't change as a person or what I believe. That's That's been a constant. How I go about it, yeah, sort of. Depends where you're at to, the club you're at, who you're dealing with, um, yeah, sort of all those kind of things. So, um, but in terms of me as a person, haven't really changed through that. You mentioned in the broadcast, broadcast section about Solanke's profile and video. Could you elaborate on what you meant by, like, what aspects of his profile put you, gave him the edge over perhaps what Eric Bosch? Uh, it was kind of a combination of things, you know, the, the kind of... Um, striker he is in terms of his mobility. He's you know last year he's you know obviously with um, Adonis going to to Bournemouth they changed the way they played. Really strong pressing side. He was at the forefront of that. That's an important part of what we do. He's got a real good presence in the box. Um, so it's, it's a whole range of things. The kind of person he is, you know, and where he's at in his career. You know, he's again I talk about struggle. He had some struggles early in his career, but he's come through those and. So it's it's you know you, it's, it's not just one or two things. It's a kind of all round fit that I thought for what we would need right now. I thought Dom was 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 the ideal. Time to finish with John, please. Uh, things you said about social media to me made me really upset when I listened to Nico Anastasia the other day. How does a long term manager exist in the world? <laughs> I got no idea, and um, thankfully, you know, long term for me is not that long. Uh, you know, so um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, it, it's it's, um, you know, you have to live in that world. You have to understand it. I mean, I you know, people saying, well, you know, tell players to not use their. You know, to get off social, get off social platforms, and they just you can't do that. That's a different world. And, and like I said, they seem to enjoy engagement in that sense. So who am I to judge? You know. But I, I, I don't look. I don't like. Like I said, there was years. You know, when it first got in, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the immediacy of information. The information came from different sources. You know, and you kind of knew. Okay, there's there was always rap bands on there that gave you know some abuse and stuff and things that you just kind of could ignore but I just think the volume of that now is totally superseded anything positive that you get from my perspective anyway because I'm a I'm a curious kind of guy I'm an information junkie I like to look at different resources ways to to kind of nourish my brain as much as I my limited brain space as much as I can um, and I don't get anything out like you know probably like I said two three years ago I started looking I'm going I don't get anything out of it anymore that gives me any sort of sense of positivity about what I want to do so just stay off it. Is it fair to say that you need to become the man out? You need employers who can think the same way you do. The average person in the back of the class of manager is not the man you is in general. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's an aspect to it. I think that the tenure of managers and the, the patience people have with anything, I guess, has exponentially shortened or lessened with the expansion of so much um, 
so many platforms of, you know, um, people one way or another trying to, you know, rush to judgment and, and, and make calls on things, I think. Um, and, it, and it's difficult, like I said, I mean, for, you know, if I was a young manager today, I, 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 I suspect I'd, I'd deal with it differently, I think, if I, if I was sort of starting out today and I'm thinking, what's the next sort of 20, 30 years going to look like as a manager in any football club or working in this environment, I'd be thinking, you probably go, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be thinking short term, you know, with everything I do, just little hits along the way so I can get a career for myself because very few spaces where you can go, okay, um, they still exist like, and, and usually they're the success stories, um, but they're the exceptions rather than the rule. Is this the most difficult job facing the way you face it? Um, I think the most difficult job I had was the first one because I reckon if I failed my first one, I wouldn't have got anything else. You know, I was coaching my hometown club, um, club I grew up with. Um, the only reason probably I got an opportunity was because that's they knew me at that club, and I don't think I would have got an opportunity anywhere else if I wasn't successful. And I think after five games, we were sitting, no wins, bottom of the table. So that was pretty difficult. But... Um, they're all challenging, but that's why I love it. You know, that's why um, you know, I do what I do. I, I, I kind of enjoy, I've always said, I, I enjoy I enjoy the struggle, enjoy the, the difficult bits. And, you know, um, who knows how it all ends? I don't know. No one knows. You just, like I said, for me, it's just about doing what I believe is uh, the right thing to do in my eyes to get success and, and hopefully... Um, change the fortunes of this fantastic football club. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.